Hi everybody, this is Dr. Kat Fleece from Central New Mexico Community College. Here we're starting with the respiratory system and I've made a whole bunch of videos. This is the first in a series of videos that cover the anatomy of the respiratory system as well as the physiology of the respiratory system. The anatomy videos will stop with video G. The respiratory system starts to develop shortly after the heart develops. Remember the heart and the cardiovascular system is the first organ system to develop in the embryo. The respiratory system starts to develop around the fourth week of gestation. And notice that it will not fully finish developing until early childhood. Let's remind ourselves what the function is of the respiratory system. Clearly it provides our body with oxygen and it allows us to get rid of the carbon dioxide, but let's, let's rest, refresh our memory of why we need the oxygen and how we actually accumulate all of this carbon dioxide that we then eventually exhale as a waste product. So near the bottom here, we see the very famous reaction you spend a lot of time learning about in introductory biology. And this is of course the reaction for cellular respiration, aerobic cellular respiration that is with this right here representing glucose. And then we see, of course, the other molecules. Here we have the oxygen, which is the oxygen that we um, inhale via the air that we inhale. We also in find that there is water vapor in the air that we inhale from the atmosphere. When this process of cellular respiration occurs. The goal, of course, is to form ATP. That's our big goal. That's the whole purpose of us bringing in that oxygen. But during the process of ATP production, particularly in the Krebs cycle, we produce some carbon dioxide. And of course, that's what we will exhale in the air mixture that we expire. Let's use this figure now to go over the gross anatomy of the respiratory system. We find that the nose has a nasal cavity and some other structures that um, have various functions as we'll look at when we focus on those parts of the body, along with the paranasal sinuses, which are not illustrated here. We have uh, four sets of paranasal sinuses. As we bring in air through the nose or even the mouth, air will then enter into what we in layman's terms referred to as the pharynx, which is the back of our throat, which then connects to the larynx. And where we see the pharynx uh, turning into the larynx, we're going to find a structure called the epiglottis that is going to prevent food from entering into our trachea. The trachea or the windpipe is quickly going to then split into two major branches that are going to continue branching and continue branching and continue branching to where we have branches called bronchi, which is plural for bronchus. They will continue to branch into smaller and smaller structures or, or conducting structures called bronchioles. And ultimately we get to what we call alveolar ducts with alveolar sacs made up of alveoli. We should really also mention the diaphragm, which is this dome-shaped skeletal muscle, which when we inspire will contract and flatten downward in an attempt to stretch out our rib cage and therefore allow for air to flow into our uh, thoracic cavity, as we will learn in the videos of respiratory physiology. Now there are two ways in which we can discuss the anatomy and even the physiology of the respiratory system. We can take the approach of the anatomical regions and when we talk about the two anatomical regions we're referring to the upper respiratory tract which starts with the nose. It also includes the paranasal sinuses and it goes down to the superior portion of the larynx. The lower respiratory tract then picks up with the remainder of the larynx and goes all the way down to the bronchioles. What we will use as a way of discussing the respiratory system is the system of the physiological regions. 
meaning we're going to first focus on what we call the conducting zone, which is the zone or which includes all the structures that allow for the air to just flow from one structure to another structure. No gas exchange is occurring. It's really a system of primarily tubes that function as conduits. From there we call it the conducting zone. It's not until we get what we call the respiratory zone that gas exchange can begin to occur. And as you can imagine, histologically, we need to get to a, an, an anatomy of the, 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 the tubes, the ducts, and the cells involved that will allow for gas exchange, as we will see. So this wraps up our introduction to the respiratory system.